So hello um, and uh, welcome again. Uh, during the last uh, few weeks uh, we've been uh, breeding butterflies. So what we did is we caught caterpillars and uh, we put them into a nice little self-constructed cage. We gave them a lot of food, a lot of plants to eat. And sure enough, after around two weeks, we had butterflies. And uh, what was left over after the, the butterfly emerged from the pupa was the shell of the pupa. And this shell, uh, that's something that I looked at under the microscope. So um, after the intro, I will show you in more detail of what we did. Well, we started out uh, by collecting uh, some caterpillars and we put uh, the caterpillars together with a stinging nettle on which we found the caterpillar. We put them uh, into a cage. Uh, here you see a little time lapse. And uh, the caterpillars were eating away happily uh, the, the plant material and we had to replace the plant material approximately two times every day. And here you can see them again in, in, real, time, in real time. The previous one was a time lapse. And you can now see how they were actually uh, eating holes into the into the leaves. And after a few days, uh, they started to attach uh, themselves to the ceiling um, of the cage. And this is a sign that now they start to form um, a pupa. And this happens by uh, rolling back uh, the black external skin. And beneath that, um, a green pupa started to appear. And the pupa was moving back and forth vigorously to shake off uh, the black uh, skin. And here you see two of them forming a pupa. And all of this uh, occurred within only a few hours. So um, this was quite synch uh, synchronous uh, among the, the, the caterpillars. So within, uh, I would say, a day or two, um, all of them started to do this. Yeah, and after a few hours, uh, half of them already started uh, to form this pupa, the others are still preparing to do so. And uh, yet after a few days, uh, we could see that uh, the color of them uh, changed. And this is a sign that metamorphosis is now happening. So a butterfly is now forming inside these pupae. And here you can see them all connected to the wooden bar, which was part of the cage. And this was uh, now the last butterfly to emerge, um, the pupa popped open, it tore open and out came the butterfly and it was pumping up its wings so I also made it a little bit faster here and uh, after a few hours uh, pretty much all of the butterflies started to appear. And uh, they're now hanging there they're, uh, and they're waiting for the wings to dry. And then later on they started to fly around in the cage and that's uh, of course also the time when we had to release them. And this is how it looks like, it's a so-called European peacock. It's a very nice uh, looking butterfly, it's also a very relatively common one, but butterflies are now not as common obviously as they used to be with all the environmental problems uh, that they are and also the loss of habitat. And uh, here you can actually see uh, me take uh, the carry the cage uh, to the car uh, for the butterflies to be released. Yeah, and so we opened the cage um, at the very place where we collected the caterpillars and we had to tap the netting of the cage to actually make them fly away. Yeah, and all in all we had 69. We had 69 butterflies, uh, one of the caterpillars died um, and uh, this, so the, the success rate is, is quite high. Yeah, but I, I know this is supposed to be a microscopy channel, so I did not forget about the actual purpose um, of this uh, activity. Because what I wanted to do is, is I wanted to look at, uh, at this, this shell um, of the pupa. That's the only thing that was left over. The empty shell was very thin and also transparent. And I simply wanted to put this under the microscope. And uh, this is what I did. And uh, yeah, um, some of them here are still attached uh, to uh, the stinging nettle, the, the stem of the plant. Not all of them attached to the cage, but some of them attached uh, to the plant material. First, I placed a small drop of U-Pearl mounting medium. Uh, that is my favorite mounting medium on the slide. And you can see it's very viscous. Um, you kind of have to add more solvent, I think, uh, because it did not really flow very well. It's way, way too thick. Um, 
but um, I have to admit I was simply not uh, too lazy to add some solvent so I just tried it anyway like this and of course you can see that this little part that I cut off with the scissors was not really covered by the mounting medium so I had to push it into the mounting medium um, and I had to make sure that there's also some mounting medium on top because you have to make sure that there is no air um, surrounding it yeah but it actually ultimately I, I was successful in doing that um, and I placed another small drop on top just to make sure that there is enough uh, mounting medium present and then of course um, I added uh, a cover glass and uh, because the mounting medium was so so viscous so thick uh, I had to actually push uh, the cover glass down of course I, I cleaned my tweezers uh, beforehand because otherwise I would have had some mounting medium on the top of the uh, cover glass and that's actually not so nice what you can see here because you can see that some of the mounting medium was spilling out on the edges now this is water I did a second one um, where I used uh, water um, as a mounting medium and I just wanted to compare how the, the image is how the image is different um, yeah and uh, so a drop of water um, another um, piece of the, the shell of the pupa and then a cover glass so of course it was much easier the surface tension kind of pulled the cover glass uh, right on this, onto the slide and then I, of course, uh, put everything under the microscope and then I had a look um, at, uh, at the whole thing. Um, yeah, and I'm going to now show you how uh, this, this looks like uh, using... This one is Uperol, okay? And the black oval things, these, that's, these are air bubbles, right? And yeah, and that's basically very transparent, as you can see. Um, the large uh, black circles, these are also air bubbles. Um, so very transparent. Um, and you can see that there's some discoloration, some pigments there um, as well. And uh, yeah, that is now basically the, uh, the and, uh, at a slightly higher magnification. Um, I'm focusing right now. But as you can see, very transparent and there is uh, no really cell, no cellular structures visible, which does not surprise me because uh, the, uh, the shell is made probably most likely like, just like the exoskeleton of the insect that are made out of chitin. I'm playing around now with the condenser aperture diaphragm and now I'm uh, showing you the contrast this is now in water and you can see, actually see many more details here uh, again the oval structure and the air bubble but overall it's much less transparent and I think the reason is is because the water was not able to infiltrate um, the, um, the, the, the shell um, very well um, so there is a more a, diff a larger difference in, in ref uh, difference in refractive index slightly higher magnification again you can see more structures here this was not a field diaphragm that I was kind of closing to see if this has an impact yeah and I think all of those dark uh, structures that you see maybe um, this could be simply nothing more than the impression of the the, the butterfly on the shell maybe yeah so maybe the surface uh, texture I can imagine but I'm not quite sure one had one would have to have a, a closer look at everything but uh, I think the interesting thing here is really that the difference in mounting medium makes such a big difference in how the specimen appears. And this black structure that you see in the center right now, that is a scale of the butterfly. Now, this means that when the butterfly emerged, uh, it, uh, for, it lost one of its scales. And uh, this is uh, something that I um, actually am looking at here right now. And uh, I'm again playing around with the condenser a little bit. This is why the brightness changes, I'm yet at a higher magnification. And you can actually see some of the structural details of this scale. Um, and these scales can be quite commonly found also in house dust. Um, so if you see, ever see something like this in house dust, then you know that probably butterfly uh, lost, uh, lost this. Um, and this is uh, still in, that's in bright field, okay? Um, so uh, in using water, just a regular um, microscopy, uh, microscopy, no special techniques here. And you can see it, so it's quite uh, well visible, okay? But what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to switch over to dark field. So I'm closing the condenser a little bit, you see the contrast is higher. I'm now going to switch over to dark field. And uh, this will make everything appear dramatically different, because now the specimen appears bright on a dark background. And uh, you can also see now different structural details. For example, the air bubbles, the oval air bubbles, they do not look as dark anymore. Okay, uh, but uh, you can also see some details there. And uh, what happens now is if I zoom in a little bit with a higher magnification, you can now still, still see the scale in the center, but not very well. So it's uh, almost difficult to see. And now I'm back in bright field. Okay, so you can actually see that in bright field the scale can be seen much better than in dark field. So what you have to do in microscopy is you have to try different uh, the mounting media, you have to try, try different illumination techniques because different uh, techniques are suitable for, for diff different things that you want to observe. Okay, 
Yeah, and that's uh, again in, in dark field, and you can see that uh, the contrast of the scale is not as, as high um, as uh, in, in bright field. And now I try dark field with the UPRO mounting medium, the, the transparent uh, specimen. These are the air bubbles, very white, well, not so interesting, but the rest of the shell here is very difficult to see because of its transparency. What I see is all those white dots, you know, that's all dust, okay? But so very not very suitable, I think. Okay, that's it. Well, uh, that was it again. I hope it was interesting for you. I know it was probably not the most exciting microscopic observation. There's not a lot to see, uh, but still. Um, I wish you in any case a nice day and uh, all the best and as always, happy micro hunting. Bye bye.